Now this question says that the incomplete histogram and table gives some information about the time in minutes that cars were parked in a car park. Now this is the incomplete histogram, okay? Now we are told to use the information in the histogram to complete the frequency table. Now this is the frequency table. And now we are told to use the information in the table to complete the histogram, okay? Before we go ahead to do this, let's treat a topic I call histograms okay now what are histograms histograms are graphs okay that uses their vertical columns to show frequencies are graphs like bar charts okay that uses their vertical columns to show frequency okay they are basically what histograms are they look like bar charts but the the area occupied by the histogram okay represent the frequency okay for example in this question all these areas occupied by the histogram actually represent the frequency now let's from when when you're trying to draw a histogram in the first place okay you work with these values if for example you're giving 0 t 30 30 t is greater than 30 and less than or equal to 40 t is greater than 40 and less than or equal to 60 t is greater than 60 and less than or equal to 80 maybe t is greater than 80 but less than or equal to 100 now let's use these values if you're asked to plot okay these are the class intervals okay These are the class intervals. Now, if we are given frequencies of about 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, okay? And then we are asked to plot our histogram. Now, before we plot our histograms, there are two major values that we use in plotting our histograms. The first one is the lower class boundary. Okay, now the second one is the frequency density. Okay, now the lower class boundary is always on the... Now, if, it's, if this is where you're plotting it, the lower class boundary is always on the x-axis and the frequency density is always on the y-axis. Okay? Now, the frequency density just shows you the distribution of the frequency. Okay? Now, the lower class boundaries are all the ones. Now, how do you get your frequency density? Frequency density is gotten by saying your frequency divided by your class width. Now, what is your class width? 0 to 30 is... If you want to calculate your class width, you just do your upper class boundary minus lower class boundary. That's 30 minus 0. That's 30. So, your your class width for that one is 30. Now, 40 minus 30 is 10. So, your class width for that one is 10. 60 minus 40 is 20. So, class width for that one is 20. 80 minus 6 is 20. So, class width for that one is 20. 100 minus 8 is 20. Class width for that one is 20. So, we'll just... This is our frequency, okay? So, our class width, 30 minus 0, 30. 40 minus 30, 10. 60 minus 40 20 80 minus 60 is 20 100 minus 80 is 20 now therefore your class suite is upper class boundary minus the lower class boundary
okay that's how you get your class width okay now your frequencies are those ones so what we are going to have here is your fd frequency density now frequency density is frequency divided by class width okay so we'll have 10 divided by 30 as 0 0.33 okay now 20 divided by 10 is 2 30 divided by 20 is 1.5 40 divided by 20 is 2 50 divided by 20 is 2.5 okay now these are the frequency densities now let's go ahead and plot the histogram now if you want to draw the histogram let's say we'll have something like this and something like this permit my rough drawing rough sketching okay now we have our frequency density here and we have our lower class boundary here now our lower class boundary here are 0 30 40 60 80 so let's see if we can do 10 by 10 10 20 30 40 50 oh it will enter 60 70 okay let's use about 20 40 60 80 100 120 140 now on this on this axis this frequency density axis we're going to calibrate maybe this as one this as two this as three this as four okay now for the first one we have for lower class boundary of zero zero two or lower class boundary from zero to that to the upper class boundary of 30 we have frequency density of 0 0.33 so we have from zero here to 30 here okay we have 0 0.33 Maybe let's say our 0 0.33 will be here. Okay. From here, it drag to this. Okay. Now, the next one is from our 30 to our 40. We have 2. From this 30 to 40 here, we have 2. So, we just raise this line. Okay. We have 2. Now, from 40 to 60, we have 1.5. From 40 to 60, we have 1.5. Let's say 1.5 is here. We have this 40 to 60, 1.5. Now from 60 to 80, we have 2. From 60 to 80, we have 2 again. We have 2. Let's say our 680 is there. Now from 80 to 100, we have 2.5. From 80 to 100, we have 2.5. okay now this is how our histogram is going to be actually all these areas covered by this histogram represent the frequency okay now though we 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 actually using our lower class boundary here you see that each bar represents the class suite this is zero and this is 30 and that's a class suite now this is 30 and this is 40 that's a class suite okay so no matter no, ma no matter the fact that we call this our lower class boundary axis it's actually the class suite that that is represented on this axis okay now being having been able to do that we're going to go back to the question now and try to answer that question now you know in the question we're told that we should use the information in the histogram to complete the frequency table the frequency table is not complete so we're supposed to use information here to complete the frequency table now before you're able to do that we have to ask ourselves what are the three values actually needed to draw this histogram okay you know we need our frequency we need our frequency density and we need our class width okay now and our frequency density is frequency divided by class width okay now first we have to do this we are going to look for a value that has our frequency frequency density and class width okay because this axis now is not calibrated that's the frequency density axis it's not calibrated so we can't we won't just say okay from here to here is two or from here to here is three no so it's from a value that is complete that has frequency density frequency density class width and frequency 
that will now say okay let's pick values from here and now calibrate the rest now how are we going to know a value that has frequency a value that has frequency will have a value here okay or a class that has frequency will have a value here now for the one that has frequency density if the same class has a, va a value for frequency here and is represented on this graph okay then you have class with two two then is that value we're looking for now let's check for the first one 30 to 40 30 to 40 is represented here 30 to 40 has frequency of 35 okay and then it has class with 30 to 40 so we can use this and calibrate this okay now for us to do that we have to calculate what our frequency density is okay from our frequency density we have the frequency is 35 and our class width is 40 minus 30 40 minus 30 is 10 okay so our frequency density there is 3.5 so we'll go to 30 to 40 30 to 40 is 3.5 so that means this mark here is 3.5 okay now we're going to calculate how many marks are are there from here to here so we'll know, be able to know what calibrations all these other ones are so we have one two okay one d zero one two then there's three there's four there's five there's six there's seven okay so 3.5 divided by seven that's 0 0.5 okay because when 0 0.5 multiply seven we have 3.5 so for each each mark is 0 0.5 so this is this is 0 0.5 this is one this one two three four five now this is 1.5 and this is two and this is 2.5 and this is three so you find out that this is now 3.5 now we've gotten what we want now by calibrating this we'll be able to find out the frequency density of all these other ones remember the first thing we did was we went to this point and we looked for a an interval or a class interval or values that have both frequency class interval and frequency density that's one that is drawn here okay and it has frequency and it has class interval this will help us be able to find out the frequency density then when we find out the frequency density we'll now go to this place and now calibrate this when we're able to calibrate this okay we now know the frequency densities of others okay now that's being clear now let's calculate for 0 to 30 0 to 30 the frequency density is actually 1 I know that we have frequency density equals the frequency of our class width and we're looking for frequency so you have frequency equal to frequency density times class width that's when you cross multiply okay this multiplies is f multiply one okay now we have our frequency equal to frequency density times class width now to get our frequency we've gotten that our frequency density is one and then let's find our class width 30 minus 0 is 30 so we have our class width is 30 so this will give us 30 times 1 30 so we have that our frequency here will be 30 okay now that's been done let's do for the second one now for 40 to 60 we have 40 to 60 when we we'll follow it up we we'll find out that our frequency density is 3 so we have that f equal to 3 times now 40 to 60 the class width is 60 minus 40 and that's 20 so we have 3 times 20 is 60 so we have 60 here now if you notice we've been able to complete this frequency table okay now the next question that followed it says use the information in the table to complete the histogram okay now remember we've already done one part in the histogram by completing this table this calibrations on the frequency density okay now the next thing we are going to do is we will find out that this thing stopped in this this drawing stopped in 40 to 60 bar okay now that means we need to we need to complete the 60 to 80 and 80 to 120 so for the 60 to 80 bar we have that our frequency density will be frequency our frequency for 60 to 80 is 30 divided by 
class width our class width is 80 minus 60 that's 20 so you have 1.5 okay so we'll go to 60 to 80 and trace 1.5 so we have this is 60 to 80 and this is 1.5 this is one this is one two three four five okay this is 1.5 now on 60 to 80 so shade it a bit okay now for the next one again 80 to 120 we have that our our frequency is 20 so our frequency density will be frequency that's 20 divided by class width 120 minus 80 is going to give us 40 so when you divide out you have 1 over 2 which is 0 0.5 okay now our frequency density for 80 to 120 is going to be 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 is this line so we have from 80 to 120 so from here to the very end we have 0 0.5 okay so you calibrate now you've, you've succeeded in completing this histogram okay now remember our, our steps the, the basic thing now is if you know the things you need when you want to when you want to draw a histogram you'll be able to do this perfectly without issues you need your frequency density, you need your class width, and you need your frequency. Okay? Now, for you to, you know, when, when you're solving an equation or solving something, you have to start from the known to the unknown. That's why we have to look for any of the class intervals that has this class interval frequency and is represented here. That way, we're able to now find out the frequency density of that class interval then after finding it out we're now able to calibrate this axis and after calibrating it we then we're now able to come back here and trace for each one and find out the and solve for the frequencies then after find solving for the frequencies we're now able to uh, uh, to work out the frequency densities for the ones that were not represented now after working out the frequency densities after working out the frequency densities we now plotted them down on the histogram and that's how we're able to complete the histogram so that's how you draw a histogram or complete it or start from any point